MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to completely trust again. I feel very sad that there's that kind of evil in the world. A nonprofit here in Manhattan is recovering from a huge dilemma. I'm Jolie Slee, and I'll tell you how Tiny Tales is getting back on their feet after their social media and PayPal accounts were hacked into. And I'll tell you ways you can protect your business from similar situations. I'm Kristen Ruckel, and I'm driving through Gallatin Canyon right now. And following recent accidents, I'm asking commuters if they feel safe driving this road every day. A lawmaker has grilled the PGA about its planned merger with Saudi back to live golf. I'm Natalie Brand with why PGA executives say the game faced an existential threat. I'm Ryan Gambo for MTN News at the Big Sky RC Modelers Airfield. Coming up, I'll tell you about the hobby and take my nap at flying an RC aircraft. Alrighty, it is 631 on this Wednesday. James Jealous McDonald. of that story. I want to I want to see this. Talk I want to do that. Yeah. Great conditions to fly. Yeah. Right now look at it over the mining it city. It is it's gorgeous. a gorgeous morning. Lots of sunshine. There is a bit of a headwind, uh, but it okay. uh, uh. looks like we're going to do OK. <laughs> Our temperatures this morning into the 40s for most uh, 36 in West Yellowstone, 57 this morning in Helena. Hmm. You look at the future cast uh, models. There's not a great chance of rain today. The noon hour, I would eat uh, outdoors, take a nice picnic lunch. The afternoon out toward West Yellowstone, the isolated chance of a shower or a thunderstorm. It is a gorgeous morning, a wow. little bit of a breeze, but again, it's going to be a comfortable day today. Our temperatures near average for the afternoon today. It does look like we are going to uh, really enjoy uh, the next couple of days. The weekend, well, it may be a little warmer. I'm going to go out on the uh, weather patio and uh, give you that forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right, looking forward to it, Matt. Thank you very much. 632 now. People are setting out flowers on the campus of Montana Tech for Austin Neves, who recently lost his life on July 3rd to a hit and run driver. According to a court document, the 23 year old and his 21 year old brother were walking along the 1400 block of West Granite Street at around 11 o'clock at night on July 3rd when they were struck by a Jeep. Now both men were taken to the hospital where Austin was pronounced dead. The Butte woman who was charged in the incident has bonded out of jail and is awaiting a court date in district court. Shauna O'Brien is charged with one felony count of negligent homicide and one misdemeanor count of negligent endangerment for injuring 21 year old Connor Neves. That's Austin's brother. And Gallatin County and Big Sky have become busier and busier over the years, and that means more and more cars on the roads to get there. And MTN's Kristen Merkel shows us how longtime commuters are responding to the influx of traffic. In the past few years, more and more people have been using this road, Highway 191, to commute to and from Big Sky. And people that take this road daily are noticing that it's becoming more dangerous. Every single day I feel unsafe driving the kids. <laughs> Harrison has been commuting to Big Sky for over two years and says the canyon has been noticeably worse. It's it's an absolute mess. It's just accidents every week and traffic and this and that. Gallatin County Sheriff Sergeant Daniel Hayden says the number of cars on Lone Mountain Trail, the main road leading through Big Sky, has increased drastically. So the state has a traffic counter on Lone Mountain Trail, and if you look at the data on that, the number of vehicles traveling that road on average per day has more than doubled in the last decade. A couple of years ago, it was an average of over 9,000 vehicles a day. Sergeant Hayden says there have been significant improvements to the canyon and Big Sky. He insists that most severe accidents occur when speed, alcohol, or no seatbelts are involved. He believes there aren't more accidents on average, just more people. Are there more crashes? Yes. But are there a lot more vehicles? Yes. Sergeant Hayden blames some of the traffic in Big Sky on the Highway 64 projects that will bring improvements, including road widening and turn lanes. The improvements we're going to make are going to be so beneficial for the community for years to come. We just have to recognize that while this is going on, we need to spend a little bit more time on our commute, plan to be there a little bit earlier because we have no choice. We're going to have to deal with this traffic. And Harrison does just that. I feel like we're usually leaving either half an hour early or an hour late to try to avoid the rush hour. In Big Sky, Kristen Merkel, MTN News. Thank you very much, Kristen. Now a nonprofit canine rescue is facing a nightmare it never saw coming. MTN's Jolie Salee tells us how Tiny Tails in Manhattan is recovering after a hacker tried to take it all. 
a nonprofit here in Manhattan fostering puppies and small dogs is recovering from a huge dilemma after their social media accounts and PayPal accounts were hacked. I can't think of a bigger violation than to work for 20 years. <clears throat> I feel very sad that there's that kind of evil in the world. Tony. Diana Stafford says running her business, Tiny Tails Canine Rescue, has been a dream. But on June 20th, Stafford faced a nightmare she never saw coming. All of our social media was hacked. Within a matter of minutes, he had us completely locked out of all the pages. The hacker, who appears to be based out of Nigeria, cleaned out Tiny Tails' PayPal accounts and began using the Facebook to scam followers of Tiny Tails, making up stories and asking for money, as you can see in these screenshots provided by Stafford. The rescue has taken a pretty good, good hit. We're probably going to set us back 10 years. And as for these three puppies Stafford is fostering? They would already be in their homes if it wasn't for this. After three long weeks of feeling hopeless, Stafford regained access to all of her accounts. It was Senator Tester's office that actually got it done. Stafford says she hopes this will be a lesson for folks, especially since Tiny Tails isn't the only rescue that's been violated by the hacker. Four Paws over in Cardwell was hacked and Big Sky Happy Tails up in Missoula was hacked. Stafford says this is the type of message that you should look out for. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to completely trust again. To find out ways you can donate, adopt, or help Tiny Tails in any way, you can visit our website. I am very sorry that I trusted this individual and that it caused harm to this business that I love so much. In Manhattan, Jolie Salib, MTN News. Now switching gears to some international headlines, lawmakers are accusing the Saudi Arabian government of sports washing its human rights abuses with the large investments in popular sports, including a planned merger between the Saudi-backed Live Golf and the PGA. Now golf executives were called before Congress yesterday to testify about the deal. Natalie Brad has more details from Capitol Hill. Today's hearing is about much more than the game of golf. Connecticut Senator Richard Blumenthal came out swinging against PGA executives, grilling them over why the tour suddenly reversed course on its opposition to live golf, moving to merge with the Saudi-backed league instead. It's a regime that has reportedly killed journalists, jailed and tortured dissidents, fostered the war in Yemen, and supported other terrorist activities, including the 9-11 attack. Blumenthal accused the Saudi government of using money and sports to try and clean up its public image. What is the amount of the Saudi investment that is going to be made? There's been discussions it would be a significant amount. North of what one, are the amounts north, that have been discussed? North of one billion. PGA executives testify the sport faced an existential threat in its previous standoff with Liv. If it all continued, expensive legal fights, every day wondering which player was going to leave next, a fan base tired of hearing about it, sponsors nervous. Golf as we know it would be damaged forever. Some families of 9-11 victims attended the hearing. They've said they're shocked and offended by the planned merger. If any person had the remotest connection to an attack on our country and the murder of my friends, I am the last guy that would be sitting at a table with them. The PGA has committed to meeting with 9-11 families and executives say the merger is not a done deal. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Now, Senator Blumenthal suggested the Department of Justice may move to block the merger on antitrust grounds if and when the PGA live merger goes through. Now back here closer to home, HRDC's Galton Valley Food Bank received a refrigerated van from Whole Foods yesterday afternoon. The $85,000 van is a donation from the new store, and the van was also filled with about two pallets of food, which the store also donated. HRDC says Whole Foods has donated around 30,000 pounds of food to the food bank and say that this latest donation helps serve the community during a time of record-breaking need. The new van, they say, will be used five days a week to pick up and deliver food all around town.
They've been wonderful partners and it's really cool to get to see the impact that they're making in the community. Um, they're doing so much great work. I mean, they touch so many different parts of this community and so it's really wonderful to get to be a part of that through our donations. It will be able to go out on food rescue routes every day, Monday through Friday, for the rest of its life, I hope. Uh, it will bring in thousands, hundreds of thousands of pounds of food, truly. HRDC says it is always looking for the community's help, whether it be volunteering or through donations. And many of us at some point in our lives dreamed about being able to fly. Now thanks to, to technology, just about any one of us can. MTN's Ryan Berg takes us to the skies over Great Falls to learn how. This isn't your average prop plane. It's one of the many hobbies of the Big Sky RC Modelers Club. A door slamming convoy on a micro scale. We've got members from eight years old, probably five years old, all the way up to 80 plus that are flying and racing cars. And a tarmac lined with RC aircraft. In the airplanes, um, all kinds of different sizes, um, sport planes, sc uh, scale planes. <laughs> Dan Woods, club president, credits his passion for the RC hobby to his father. I bought my first plane, no instruction, went to the park and destroyed it, of course, because I had no idea what I was doing. And then we came out here for an event similar to this, and I said, yep, this is what I want to do, and it went from there. Head to the airfield, and you'll find John Sandy. Back in 1965, there was a guy at a, at a park we went to in Phoenix, and this guy had a... Uh, a World War II German aircraft on line control on strings and I just thought that was the coolest thing. For these pilots it's more than a hobby it's an addiction in the sticks. Especially if I have a good day at the field and I don't destroy something you know that's even better. Finally it was my turn for elation. Pull back. Easy, easy. Okay, left. I got it. Oh shoot this is hard. I know. It's not easy. Okay, flying is one thing. Flying straight and level is something totally different. A camaraderie for the benefit of new members. Like anybody new coming into the field, we recommend you try it. See if you like it before you spend a nickel. And because we want people to be successful. High above Great Falls, Ryan Gamboa, MTN News.